All right, let's get into this. If anybody's seen my earlier videos, you will recognize this board in the lower right hand corner. It has a TTL input that interfaces to two CMOS CD4011s, and they were used to drive these very MOSFET transistors you see over here to form an H bridge motor control. We were struggling with problems like how to cut on fully various MOSFETs and how to which required really a higher voltage for the most part and then figuring out how to connect those higher voltage CMOS parts through a TTL part back to our Arduino or in the case of this series a pickaxe hooks up the same way. Now we're going to a completely different component and putting this aside and it's these 8-pin DIP chips. These are the TC4420 and the TC4429. They take care of all of your level shifting for input and it has a high, and they have a very high powered output to drive both MOSFETs and bipolar transistors. Let's watch a short video, very short, about 50 something seconds, showing you how to use these to run this motor. Then we will, um, I will introduce you to this part and exactly how it works. Okay, these three devices are the TC4420, they are MOSFET drivers. It takes care of your input voltage level interfacing and it has up to a 6 volt peak output drive capability which is great for parallel MOSFETs. In this case I'm just driving a pair of parallel MOSFETs to off the pulse width modulation from a pickaxe. to control my speed. All right, let's look at in detail of data taken from the spec sheet and I've added some notes to it. In the case of my demonstration, I use the eight pin dip as shown here in the upper left corner. Pin one and eight goes to your positive voltage. 4 and 5 go to ground, 7 and 6, or 6 and 7, are connected together for your output. Make sure you connect them together. Your input is pin 2. Let's move down here. This already does your TTL CMOS level shifting. You can input 3.3, 5 volts, or even 12 volts. has a very wide voltage range, and it also has input protection takes care of all of that for you. The input of course comes down to a type of MOSFET, has a con little constant current source here, it has a Schmidt trigger circuit also built into it. This is where it differs. From the Schmidt trigger to the output amp is a direct connection for the 4420 for the 4429, they will place an inverter at this stage, meaning very simply, if it's inverting, it's a high in, low out, low in and high out. But if it's non-inverting, high out, high in, high out. Let's observe our two output uh, MOSFET transistors here. You see how they're configured. A high out will switch on this upper transistor a low out will switch on the lower transistor. These are very low impedance. So if you switch on the upper transistor to VDD, within a few tenths of a volt, you will get VDD. This, and that's called source. If you connect this for a low output, that will be sync. And it will be a very low impedance to ground. The operating voltage is 4.5 to 18 volts. And the output current is 6 amps peak. That doesn't mean 6 amps continuously. 
but six amps for a short period of time. You can run it easily at one amp or, t or whatever, depending on the package configuration. You don't want to run an eight pin dip at a couple of amps, but that's normally not needed when you're driving MOSFETs. All right, how did we get into even having to use a MOSFET driver such as the TC4420, etc.? Because if you remember my earlier video where I went around testing MOSFETs, here's a quick look at the chart that I had to deal with. Many MOSFETs will not switch on at all at 3.3 volts. If you got 3.3 coming out of an Arduino or Raspberry Pi, eh. You won't switch on the MOSFET. A lot of MOSFETs don't even switch on fully at 5 volts. They're still not cut on all the way until you go above 5 volts. As you can see here in a lot of these cases, even at 5 volts, I'm not getting the I'm getting a high RDS on. And it's going to waste power and overheat the transistors. The exception to this rule is the IRFZ44N. It will switch on fully for all practical reasons at 3.3. But this is how we're dealing with this. We really need to switch most MOSFETs on at a voltage higher than certainly 3 and sometimes even 5 volts. Here is the exact circuit that was driving the motor earlier in the live video. Very simple, you will connect 4 and 5 to ground, 1 and 8 go to VCC, which in this case is going to be the motor, same thing as the motor control, the motor voltage, up to 20 volts. And you just have a single input, it could be 3.3, 5.5, I tested it at both, it works fine. And I just had these two in-channel MOSFETs in parallel don't need any resistors or any of that type of stuff and there's your motor that this is the whole connection i mean i could have used a single mosfet i happen to have two i paralleled them you can pulse with modulation whatever you want to do the setup is this simple you do need this little bypass cap that's a very good idea Here's a picture, if you can make it out, from an earlier video where I had connected four P-channel MOSFETs in parallel. One of the nice things about these particular MOSFET drivers, it can drive a large number of parallel connected MOSFETs. If I move down the page, here is the schematic for it. Okay, I used a TC4429 for the P-channel MOSFETs. You can use a 4420 non-inverting. you got to remember, a high in here is going to give you a low out here with a 4429, and it's going to switch on the four MOSFETs. If you're using 4420, you're going to have to keep the input high to turn it off. So just keep that in mind. When these gates are driven low to ground, these MOSFETs will cut on. Here is your load down here. That's the whole circuit, a couple of bypass caps. Your, uh, here's your motor voltage and a single input. All right, here's a little bit more information on this device. Up here, of course, is the 8-pin dip. It is rated for 730 milliwatts. There's also an 8-pin DFN, has a little heat sink pad on the back. Um, you would just have to read the spec sheet to figure out. It can dissipate a little more heat than this pl cheap plastic package. A real interesting item is the TC4420 CAT or the TC4429 CAT. Those come in a TO220 package with a real heat sinking setup, and it can sink. I mean, it can dissipate 12.5 watts with a heat sink. Now, that's pretty good. That leaves some interesting applications that I'll be going over in the next video. 
All right. Where can I buy these? Um, a I looked up the TC4420 CAT. That's the power version. You can get them from Mauser or DigiKey for $2.95 each, quantity one. The interesting part is there's a direct substitute. You can get those for uh, from uh, Mauser or DigiKey. The MCP1406 and the MCP1407 are exact replacements for these. And they are a lot, they save you about a dollar twenty-five at a dollar seventy-four each quantity one. The eight pin version is a TC4420 CPA. I bought five of those off of eBay for four thirty-six with shipping from Taiwan. They worked fine. There was no controversy over Chinese sourcing. They worked just fine. I could find no flaws. In fact, to be honest with you, 95% of the time, the parts I buy are off of China. And maybe once I had a problem with some MOSFETs that I mentioned in another video, but I've been satisfied with most of what I've gotten. Again, this is experimental. So our next video is going to look closer into some alternate applications. And when we're through with the alternate applications, we will have a third video um, that we will use uh, to build a real nice, easy to build H-Bridge motor control. The reason I go back to H-Bridge motor controls for switching transistors is it's a good way to illustrate the use of these devices. You don't have to use them as H-Bridges. You can use them for other reasons. Thanks for listening. This is your host, Lewis Laughlin. Please visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com and have a great day.